I'm gonna walk, and I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna sing before my heavenly King. 
said, I want to be there. When the march around the wall. I want to be there. When the general holy call. They tell me that the hand. Has never been they tell me that the holy ghost. Take control. Yeah, I'm going to walk. I'm going to talk. I'm going to sing. For the holy ghost three and one. I'm on my way. Come on. Get to me again. Well, I'm going to walk. You know I'm going to talk. Hey, yeah, I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing. I'm a heavenly king. You know I want to be there. I want to be there. They tell me that the hell. On my way, I'm on my way to meet the king. Listen, just listen, I view the promised land. There won't be no jealousy, no hatred or strife. You must be born again. Well, your name and my name won't be called. When we get to heaven, we got to be on one accord. So get right, get back. Get back, get right, get, right. get back, get back. I'm, on I'm on my way to heaven to meet the Let us stand. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will we not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof war and be troubled, though the mountains shake. With the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. When you see me singing, you may be seated. I'm on my way, I'm on my way to heaven to be
Anthony Carter to say yes and amen to the will of God. Amen. amen. And to celebrate this wonderful gift of human personality that God deposited in our midst. Yes. We thank God for Anthony. Yes. We thank God for the laughter and the joy that he brought to so many people. Oh, yeah. yes. uh, we thank God for his record of faithfulness. Yes. Yes. Amen. And his record of support and encouragement to the members of Zion Baptist Church. Amen. We thank God for all of you who have come today to pay your respects to him and to acknowledge the fact that he has made a difference in your life. And we have come today to say in the words of Job, the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And over the past a few days as we have reflected on the life of Brother Carter, we have once again seen the sovereignty of God at work. Because God can do whatever he wants to do when he wants to do it. Amen. Amen. And he reserves for himself the exclusive right to give life and to take life from our midst. His ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. If it had been up to us, Anthony certainly would not be gone. No. He would still be with us. Oh, yeah. But God has his own plan. Oh, yeah. And he has his own time. And so we simply say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And finally, we come to be a source of encouragement to this family during their season of bereavement. Yes. Amen. amen and amen. amen. We shall now have a selection from the choir. Amen. And following that selection, we will have the reading of the Old Testament by Reverend Charles Nelson and the reading of the New Testament, New Testament by Reverend Nathaniel Norville.
scripture this morning will come from Psalm 73 verses 24 through 26. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterwards receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire besides thee. My flesh and my heart fell it, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. That is Psalm 73 verses 24 through 26. Amen. 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 Our New Testament reading comes from the 11th chapter of John. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. That is John chapter 11, verses 21 through 20. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Gracious God, our heavenly Father. Thou who art the source of every good and perfect gift, we come before you as humbly as we know how today. First of all, to give you thanks for every blessing that you granted to us according to your grace and your mercy. We know, O oh God, that you have not dealt with us according to our achievements, but instead you have given us your grace your unmerited favor. And you've blessed us in spite of the fact that so often we do not deserve your blessings. And so we want to pause to say thank you. And then, oh God, as we come today, we come on behalf of our dear brother. We come on behalf of Deacon Anthony Carter. And we come, Lord, to say thank you for the precious gift that you gave in him. Thank you, O oh God, for all that he meant to so many of us. Thank you for what he meant to his children. Thank you, Lord, for what he meant to his aunts. And thank you, Lord, for what he meant to his nieces. And thank you, Lord, for what he meant to so many people who depended on him to get things done in Zion Baptist Church. Thank you, Lord. And now, Lord, we pray that you would wrap your loving arms around this family and those who mourn his passing. Comfort them, Lord, as only you can. Speak words of tranquility and love to the deep recesses of their souls. And help them to know that Deacon Anthony Carter is just fine. And for those of us who are left behind, oh God, help us to strive and to live and to work and to serve as Deacon Carter did. So that one day we too can see you face to face. We ask these blessings. We pray for this family, that you would comfort and encourage them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We shall now have remarks from friends and family. Uh, We invite you to uh, come to the podium to my left. 
The microphone is already on and ready and waiting for you, and we, uh, we encourage you to share your remarks, but please, if at all possible, keep them to about two minutes. Amen. I said amen. 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 All right. Amen. And, uh, and if you would, when you come to the microphone, would you let us know your relationship to, uh, to Deacon Carter? Amen. Whether you're a friend, or you give us your name, and whether you're a friend, or whether uh, you are a co-worker, or whatever the relationship is, and we invite you to come now to the podium amen. on my left. My name is Etta Daly, and Anthony Carter is my nephew, and I'm here to share on behalf of myself and my sister, Shirley Ann Haynes, who was not able to make it. We just wanted to share the joy that Anthony brought to our family, the happiness Amen. he gave to us. Um, I just want to say that he, whatever he did, he served faithful and wholeheartedly in everything that he did. He was a happy, a very happy, go lucky person. Yes, he brought he joy and laughter into everyone around him. I can also remember the, the times that he, he would call me on the telephone, he and his brother, and I laughed so hard, I felt like a silly kid again. <laughs> I mean, he just kept me laughing, and that's just who he is. So I just pray. And I know that we will see him again alive. All of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we will see Anthony right. again right. alive. So, Anthony, rest in peace. We all love you. Amen. 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 I just want to say this about Deacon Anthony Carter. We've known each other almost since childhood. Now, even though he's about 10 or 12 years behind me, we've known each other a good while. And we were eating buddies. We'd all the time go to the restaurant and eat. with, uh, <clears throat> And we'd always have a good time with each other. We'd all the time talk about things, say things. But then one day I said, look, this work, we all getting older. If you need some help down there, he said, no, no. Sometimes I sit here and we just talk. But I said, I'm going to help you move some of these tables and all. And the thing of it is, we have a good time. We and Bill Graves going to eat on Sunday. The Sunday that he had the accident, we were supposed to go over here and have a good meal. But then when we found out what happened, everybody said to me even last Sunday, you done lost your good eating, buddy. Well, but the thing of it is, we always had fun. So, yeah, as deacons, we'd be in the deacon training and all, and he really knew his stuff. But the point of it is, we're going to miss a true soldier yeah. around here. Thank you. Kevin Williams, uh, born and raised at Zion, and Anthony was just, he's just my friend. He was my friend. <laughs> I remember during the pandemic, when everything got closed down, but we were still here, and we learned the multimedia uh, with our friend Adolph Williams who sends his regards and condolences. Uh, and then we saw pictures of him and Adolph when they were teenagers. 
So we all go back and to the point of Central High School and before, but I remember Mom, Dad, and Alan, and all of them were near and dear to my heart, and they always will be. If you guys need anything, we're here for you. God bless you. Amen. Anthony was our bonus. Anthony was our bonus. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Alan and Anthony, Gerald and Stevie, you never saw one without the other three. They first met when they were about four or five years old, and they stayed friends their whole lives. No matter what was going on, they were always, always had each other's back. This hurts. This hurts. Family, I'm here. I'm here. Alan, uh, Anthony would call and just, I'm checking on you, Mom. I'm checking on you. Today is about Anthony, but we want you two to know that we'll always be there in your heart. You know you're at, you know the way to our house, and you know the way to our heart. You're already there. My name is Carolyn McDougal, and I don't really know how to say what and where I belong with Anthony because it intertwines so much. Um, I knew De- Deanna Carter very well. She and I worked together here at the church. We did so many things and worked so many ways, so I therefore knew the children. But I think I've known the kids almost all their life. I was their youth director when they were at that age where they were always doing something. But, uh, and there aren't many few, uh, few around here anymore, Melanie, Pastor Allen, and Anthony. And I'm going to miss Anthony because he was such a likable, oh, yeah. just nice from, from the time he was a boy until now respectful, responsible, all those kinds of things. And I watched him grow from a little boy into the powerful man that he was. Samantha's my goddaughter. And just to tell you how good this family is, when I had my first daughter, uh, I was bringing her to Sunday school. And then when I had my second daughter, I was being challenged how to get me ready for church and get both of them ready for, you know, Sunday school and how we're going to do that. And Deanna said to me, don't worry about it. She said, I'll come pick the girls up. I'll come pick Jalea up and I'll take her to Sunday school. And then you can come and bring Shayla. And I thought, wow, she would leave her house on 41st, I believe it was. She would leave there and come to my house on 39th and Scott, which is by Weber. That's a quite a ways to come mm-hmm. in the opposite direction, you know. But they were willing to do that. Mm-hmm. And sometimes if Deanna wasn't feeling well, she sent Anthony. Mm-hmm. And Anthony would come and do that for us. So I, I just know this family all kinds of ways. Wow. And I just can't tell you, tears are falling from my eyes now because I have lost a child. And I'm not really old enough to have a child that old. But I feel like I've lost a child. <laughs> and uh, Samantha, you and Alexander get in touch with me before you leave. Okay? Amen. Amen. Amen.
My name is Timothy Nolan. I was a co-worker with Anthony. One thing I'll say about Anthony, he was a very joyful man. You could always count on his, his very good smile, no matter what the day he might bring. And uh, we would share sometimes things, things of life, um, vacations and what's going on in our lives. But it will be, uh, he will be thrilling us. But praise God, he's with our Lord and Savior now. And I'm so grateful for that. Didn't think I'd be doing this. Uh, my name is Davian. Um, Pops is like a second dad to me. And uh, I could tell stories for hours, but the biggest thing he told me was one thing you got to do is stand behind your friends and your family. Whether you do anything else, right or wrong. I've known him for 12 years. Um, he loves my son. I was trying to say my son loves him. Um, Alex and I love y'all like siblings, and I'm always going to be here for y'all. Because yeah. I love y'all dad like my own. Mm-hmm. He loved me like his own. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, my name's Remy. Uh, same thing. <laughs> you know, Alex, high school, pull up to the house whenever, just hanging out. And uh, one thing about him for sure, I just know his, his voice. <laughs> And that, right, right, know, right. That laughter, <laughs> I could shake mountains and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every time I come around, I'm like, hey, you know, I know you got a trip coming up. I know you're doing something. It's always active and, you know, always there. He taught Alex so much stuff, and there'd be times where I'd be at his house and he'd teach me things. Right. Just, I'm going to miss you. Yeah. yeah. Alex, I'm there for you, you know, my brother. <laughs> Uh, my name is Fred Collins, and uh, Deacon Carter was an amazing man. Um, for those who know I've been around, he's done a lot at this church, like from small meetings, helping to open the doors, yeah, you know, in the morning to make sure everything is working, uh, to making sure that things are closed up at night. That's right. You know, the security of the church so people feel like they can still come in. Uh, I just came his sign about seven months ago and Deacon Carter welcomed me in to make sure that I knew everything that I need to know with the audio visual and I seen how much he was doing I was like okay brother you can go downstairs or whatever because he he was just doing so much with yeah. uh, like I said locking the doors whatever it was um, and then he was just a lovely brother just the, the love the the care the joy that was in him so yeah. uh, let's just remember that and uh, be a reflection of what he wanted us all to be. He was that. He was that. Yeah, yeah. So let's, yeah. Move, let's move that forward. All right, all right. Yeah. <clears throat> Am I on? Okay, there. My name is Louise Hall Mountain. And I have known the Carters for ever since I've been here at Zion. And you never know who our members are associated with or what the relationships are and all of that. Well, I was a Sunday school teacher. Um, He was in the senior department. 
Okay. Um, also, his mom and I were very good friends. She loved to, to go to get her nails done, and I would always take her to get her nails done. And uh, she got me to uh, frequent Taco Bell. <laughs> Because she'd always say after we'd make a trip, you want something to eat? And I go, yeah, where do you want to go? Taco Bell. <laughs> so every time I would uh, go to Taco Bell, which I still do now, I think about her. My brother Carter, he was my hug buddy. And what I mean by that was every Sunday we had to have a hug. And, I, and he was a good hugger. <laughs> The last Sunday that he was here at church, I remember saying to him, come on, get your hug. You know, we got to have our hug. I'm going to feel better. You're going to feel better, too. And he said, yes. And we just hugged. And I said, you know, I just love you. And I do. I love him very, very much. I'm going to miss my hugs. I'm going to miss this family. I'm going to miss his mom. I'm going to miss all of them. And I guess I was associated with Taco Bell. <laughs> but I just wanted you all to know that we love him. I love him. Um, and you'll never, he'll never be forgotten. Right. And you won't either because when I lift up my prayers, I'm going to be praying for you, his children, and his family. He was greatly loved by this church. Yes. Greatly loved. Yes. Thank you. I just want to say good uh, afternoon to everyone. Um, there was some special moments shared with, with Anthony here at the church. And as you know, he would open up the church. He'd close up the church. And he had a thing that he would come in rehearsal near the end and try to sneak up on me. And with that voice that you was talking about. And I'm like, you're not God. Stop. <laughs> but the other Sunday... Um, the first Sunday that we missed him, the lights went out. He normally puts us out the church every Sunday. But this particular Sunday, he wasn't here. And we were like, wow, we're still in the sanctuary. That's because Anthony's not here to put us out. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the lights went out. Huh. We said, okay, that must be Anthony putting us out anyway. <laughs> But he was a dear person um, where he could do something by himself. It would take two men to do. <laughs> um, we're going to sorely miss him. He was a true man of God. He yeah. loved the Lord. He loved doing work for the Lord. Anything you asked him to do, he was willing to do it. Yeah. And I have to thank him and um, young Fred Collins. They were the two, that came, two men that came to the hospital to see my son, and I was so thankful. But God is with you, and he will always be with you to the family. We love you as well as we loved him. We may even love him more than you, but just accept the fact that he was so dear. We had no other choice but to love him. You have a blessed day in the Lord. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Stan Hanner, and uh, I'm a member of the deacon board here at Zion Baptist Church. And uh, I had Anthony in training uh, to be a deacon. Um, this day is a very solemn day because we lost one of our members of the diocese. And um, I was up here before when his brother had passed. And uh, now, I believe God called him home to be with his brother. You know, because Anthony never got over that. He told me many times, Deep, I miss my brother. I miss my brother. And I know how he feels. 
because I lost a brother too. And I miss my brother. There's a bond there with brothers that cannot be replaced. Just like there's a, when a, a woman loses their sister, the sisterhood that they have is strong. It's a bond. And I know how he feels about losing his brother because there's a bond there. And, but God called him home. I was surprised, and I'm still surprised, that he's gone. And uh, I talked to Pastor about this, and I told Pastor, we need to have him join the diaconus as a prosthumous. Okay? You know, even though he was not ordained, we still consider him a brother in the di- diaconus. Yes. yes. You know, and I'd like to see him become a part of the diaconus. So when we continue our training, we will always keep him in our hearts yes. in our minds. He can't be replaced here at Zion Baptist no. Church. No. This man was everywhere in Zion Baptist Church. He was a dedicated servant. And that's primarily the role of a deacon, to be a servant. And he was a true servant of Zion Baptist Church. You know, all of us have been touched by him. You know, and we have a lot to be thankful that this man was once upon us and showed us how to serve, how to love, how to be the person you can count on and talk to in times of trouble. And I know he brought a lot of joy to a lot of people here. You know, uh, a lot was asked of him. I know sometimes people got mad at him because this wasn't set up. That wasn't set up. But yet and still, he was always here to take care of things. He will truly, truly be missed. Anthony, you are my brother. I'll never forget you. I'll never forget your brother. I'll never forget your service. I never will forget you as a man who stood tall. Even though he was a big man, he had a big heart. You know, and that heart will never, never be replaced here at Zion Baptist Church. That's right. And I just want all of you to know that Anthony Carter was a diligent servant. And I know the good Lord is saying, well done. Well done. That good and faithful servant. Well done. Amen and thank God. Good afternoon. My name is Elidris. Everyone calls me Lee Haynes. I'm from the Virginia Beach area, and I am Anthony and Alan's cousin. All right. All right. This man is going to be sorely missed because of all the love and the connection, connections and connectivity that he fostered on a regular basis. Our conversations over the phone (coughs) were always about the family. It was always about how important it was to stay connected. And I'm going to miss that because that is something we learned from our forefathers. Archie, Deanna, Clinton, Tony, Ellen Price, they all fostered that connection And that's something that I need Samantha and Alexander and everybody, all the younger cousins and children, 
to remember and to work on because that is so important. We have extended family from D.C., Virginia, Michigan, Panama, Ohio. We are all over the place, and we need to stay connected. I am going to miss him dearly. I'm going to do my best to stay connected. I ask that you all do that, not only in our family, but in all families, because it is so vitally important. God bless you. And Anthony, I'm going to miss you. Love you. Amen. Good afternoon. My name is Sandra Allen. Um, I'm First Lady of Zion Baptist Church. And uh, Anthony Carter uh, was my friend, was my buddy. Uh, Anthony teased me all the time about everything. And sometimes I would just say, Anthony, you are so weird. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I love him dearly. I love him dearly. But what I really want to share with you, you know, we talked about that voice and just his uh, servanthood is what I keep hearing. I just want you to know that a few years ago, I am a director of operations uh, at the nonprofit where I work, Center for Holistic Development. A few years ago, I needed someone to record our outgoing message. And I said, Anthony, will you do that for me, you know, with that voice? And he says, yeah, you better do it right now because I'm going to start doing this professionally pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> so he recorded, if you called our office today, you would hear his voice. When I go to the office this afternoon, I'm going to retire that outgoing message, and hopefully my technology skills will allow me to download it so we can preserve it. Uh, just wanted you to know, Alexander, uh, Samantha, just all the friends and loved ones, good man, good heart, great servant. We have been blessed by his presence. I didn't know him growing up, but I've known him for these last 16 or 17 years ago, I think when I met him, and I have just been blessed, blessed, blessed to have him in my life. Yes, yes. Good afternoon. My name is Maria Summers, and I consider myself the little sister of Anthony and Alan. I grew up right next door to them, so um, Mr. and Mrs. Carter were like my other set of parents. Uh, it went beyond that. Um, we grew up here at the church. I was baptized here in the early 70s by your dad. Um, Sister Barry was the choir director for me. So um, the one thing that I remember about Anthony, um, my big brother, is whenever we would be outside playing with my little 41st Street gang sitting over there with me, I would run outside. He was six years older than me, but I felt like he was always six feet taller than me. And I would run out and... I would say, Anthony, I'm ready, I'm ready. And he always knew what I wanted. And that was that helicopter ride where he would grab your hands and he just swing you around. And he would just do that for like two or three minutes and it felt forever. And I could get that request out of him two or three times a day. I would go in the house and if I seen him outside with the boys, I'm coming and running back out. Anthony, I'm ready, I'm ready. Um, so it, it, it just... I remember just even with Alan playing with him, they had board games. If you ever went over to their house, mm -hmm. Sister Carter always had board games out. Or, um, she would always take me on black college tours because she was at the Wesley house. Mm -hmm. And then there was Mr. Carter, who was an air traffic controller, I believe, at um, Buckley Airfield. He would take us to work with him so we could go up in the tower. And when you're a little kid, you think, Wow, we're way up here. So, again, my six degrees of separation with this family is dear to me. It went beyond being neighbors and playmates and, and church family. Um, so, I say to you guys, I hope you know, <laughs> I'm definitely going to miss, I miss all of them. I miss Sister Carter so, so much. But I'm going to miss Anthony. So I say all that to say that this was a loving, loving family. 
from friendship to the church. And I believe everything that everyone has said about Anthony up here in regards to the church because of the stock that he came from. Yeah. I am uh, Minister McLemore here at Zion. And I'm from Arkansas. That's my home. And I lost my blood brother back in 2008. But when I first moved here and I walked in and saw Anthony, he reminded me so much of my blood brother that I had to, I had to stop and look at him because he looked just like my blood brother. And I was like, who in the world is that? And then when I met Anthony and we became friends, he became just like my blood brother. Um, I was very, very close to Anthony, and I'm the director of the male course here at Zion. And when you talk about a voice, when I heard his voice, oh my Lord, I said, if I could just get him in the male choir, we will be booming, I'm telling you. But I could never convince him to join the male course because he had so many things to do. He was invited, if you talk about Zion doing something, he was talking about Anthony. He had a finger in everything that was going on. If you need the building open, you, you contact Anthony. If you need the building closed, you contact Anthony. If you need something moved, uh, something uh, for a particular program, you contact Anthony. His name will forever ring here at Zion. And I declare you, when Pastor told me about, about his home going, I was just completely dumbfounded. Yes. He'd be missed. Yeah, yeah. My name is Tim Heller. Um, not much of a public speaker, so I apologize. But um, Anthony and I started working together about eight years ago, and uh, day one, we hit it off. We became friends. And we shared the same stupid sense of humor, laughed the same <laughs> dumb jokes, <laughs> liked, you know, liked the same yes. TV shows and books and all that stuff. We just shared a, you know, a bond that was... Uh, Amazing, and uh, you know he transferred different department, and I was there shortly later, and then reverse happened, and I followed him there. Um, but uh, you know, like it's tough to follow some of these people that have known him his entire life, you know. But I feel like I did uh, that time that we spent together. Um, we talked about food. He had a love for food. Mm -hmm. um, I was looking for his awards at, at work the other day to bring him home to the kids, and I opened that bottom drawer and. It was nothing but snacks. <laughs> Overflowing. Chips, nuts, all kinds of stuff. I'm like, Auntie, one less Cheeto it, but I'm a lot easier to get you in here. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I sat next to him at work, and that voice, we talked about the voice, but I could always tell when Anthony had a woman on the phone. <laughs> it dropped one more often. <laughs> And, and, you know, he had never had a, a, a nasty word to say about anybody. We, we all know working at AAA that we sometimes get some nasty callers. But he had just the knack of calming people down with that voice. And instantly, that angry caller all of a sudden just relaxed and got through it. And he was able to help them out and take care of them. Um, he was an amazing friend, a wonderful co-worker. He had a love for barbecue. Um, uh, never forget when he took us over to... Lewis Barbecue in Charleston last year with Samantha. It was phenomenal. Uh, but, you know, you look at the turnout we've got from AAA. He touched everyone he worked with. Wow. I mean, yeah, he yeah. connected yeah. with people. Um, you know, when he had a break and he'd get up and walk around, he'd stop and say hi to everybody as he walked around that entire place, which was great when we were in the office. But uh, it's been a little tougher since the pandemic and everybody's working from home. But he still connects with people on the phone, uh, and uh, he's somebody that I'll never forget. He was a, just a, a good friend, uh, uh, just a wonderful uh, spiritual man. We talked all the time about our kids, and, and then more recently, grandkids shared stories, and you know, he, he was always showing me pictures and back, back and vice versa. So um, he's definitely going to be missed at AAA, and he's going to be missed uh, in my family. So uh, yeah. thank you.
Let's give God praise for all of those who have come forward to share remarks. Amen. I dare say, indeed, I know that there are others of you who certainly could have shared, uh, who've known Anthony since childhood, have known him working in the church, have known him on the job, uh, and in various uh, areas of life. Uh, and uh, we all loved him, and he was that kind of person. Amen? Amen. 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 And now we have a reading. I can. Prepare this. This reading, this was written by Grant McGow. And Grant was a childhood friend of, uh, of uh, Deacon Carter. And he sent this to us last night. And. I want to read it. It's a little bit lengthy, but it is a beautiful, beautiful statement coming from Brother Grant McGall, Alan and Anthony's best friend. In the heart of North Omaha, Nebraska, between the whispers of history on 41st and 40th Avenues, a brotherhood was forged in the laughter and tears of childhood. Anthony David Carter, Gerald Van Scott McGaw, Alan Dennis Carter, and I, each of us drawn together, not by blood, but by destiny, on the playgrounds of our youth and in the pews of Zion Baptist Church. Anthony, the eldest, was our compass. His calm demeanor and wisecracks served as our guide through countless adventures and misadventures. His leadership was never about authority, but about bringing out the best in us, even when we only saw the worst in ourselves. Gerald, with his wild, untamable energy and infectious grin, was the spirit of our group. He could turn a mundane walk to the store into an epic adventure, finding magic in the mundane and pulling us all along in his whirlwind of excitement. Alan, the youngest and my best friend, was the soul. His quiet observations and thoughtful insights often went unnoticed until the moments when we needed wisdom most. He was the keeper of our secrets and dreams, always listening, always understanding. From the rough and tumble games in the street to the whispered confessions during sleepovers that stretched into dawn, our bond deepened. We celebrated our first victories at the local bowling alley, suffered through the awkwardness of first dates at the movies, and found solace and strength in our baptisms at Zion Baptist Church. But time as it does wrote its own chapters. Gerald's laughter was silenced too soon, leaving a void that echoed in our hearts, in our group's heart. The loss was sudden like a storm that sweeps away the landscape without warning. And we leaned heavily on Anthony's steadfast presence to weather it. When Alan followed, the grief was different but no less profound, like losing the quiet part of one's soul that understood without words. Now, as Anthony makes his own journey to join our brothers in the heavenly world. I reflect on the tapestry of our lives, interwoven with joy and shadowed by loss. Each memory, each shared secret, each supportive embrace during the toughest times serves as a testament to the strength of our brotherhood. This legacy, born on the streets of North, North Omaha and nurtured through six decades of collective life, is our gift to the generations that follow. It is a story of brotherhood that transcends the mere presence of its members, living on in the lessons we learned and the love we shared. To Anthony, Gerald, and Alan, Thank you for the colors you painted in my life's landscape. 
Through thick and thin, you held me up as I held you. And together we built a foundation of spirit and love that will endure beyond the twilight of my days. In the echoes of our laughter and the silent prayers whispered in the sanctuary of Zion, our brotherhood remains unbroken, a perpetual testament to a love that defies time itself. Amen. Amen. That was by Brother Grant Mazar. Amen. And now the condolences and reading of the obituary uh, will be followed by a song and then the eulogy. To the family and friends, know that we are praying for you and will continue to pray for you in the days to come. Deacon Anthony Carter will be in what will be truly missed. He was truly loved, much loved here at Zion Baptist Church. Amen. Condolences. Baptist, Pat, Baptist Minister's Wise Council of Nebraska, to the family of Mr. Anthony Carter. We, the members of the Baptist Minister's Wives Council of Nebraska, express our sincere and heartfelt condolences and prayers to you in the loss of your loved one. We realize this is an extremely difficult time for your family. Just know you are in our prayers. God's word reminds us that Isaiah 41.10, which says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. His love for family and friends will be his legacy. First Corinthians 13:13 13, 13 says, And now these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. He has, he has taken his wings of the wind and the comfort of the sun as he journeys home to be with his heavenly father. Humbly submitted, Sister Carol Hooks, President of the Baptist Minister's Wives Council of Nebraska. Amen. To the family of Deacon Anthony Carter. The Christian Education Department of Zion Baptist Church would like to offer its sincere sympathy in the loss of your father, grandfather, brother-in-law, cousin, uncle, and dear friend, Anthony Carter. I, too, will miss him and all he did for Zion and our Christian education ministries. He, will, he was always an encourager and looked for ways to do what was on the surface looked to be challenging. He was willing to take the leadership in problem solving and in addressing tough issues that were difficult for others to face, especially when dealing with the logistics of meetings and workshops here at Zion. Deacon Carter was true Christian gentleman, and if the only Jesus who you saw was Deacon Carter, you saw a true servant of the Lord. Amen. Although at this time we wonder why the Lord has chosen to call our loved one home, we understand that our Lord never makes a mistake. Right. We believe in the words of our Lord when he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I pray that these words will comfort you. Come ye desolate, where ye languish. Come to the mercy seat, fervently kneel. Here bring your wounded heart, here tell your anguish. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Joy of the desolate, light of the strain, hope for the penitent, faithless and pure. Here speaks the comforter, tenderly saying, Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot cure. 
here see the bread of life, see the waters flowing forth from the throne of God, pure from above, come to the feast of love, come ever knowing earth has no sorrow, but heaven cannot remove. Prayerfully submitted, Dr. Gloria J. F., Director of Christian Education. Amen. Amen. To the family of the late Anthony D. Carter. Dear family, in God's own way and for his purpose, a few days ago God called the spirit of his beloved brother Anthony Carter from labor to reward to be with him throughout eternity. Salah. To the family, please accept our heartfelt condolences as we mourn and celebrate the vibrant life of your father, brother-in-law, grandfather, uncle, cousin, and friend. We, the Music and Fine Arts Ministry of Zion Baptist Church of Omaha, Nebraska, are grateful to God for Brother Carter yeah. and his untiring dedication as he served as a faithful media engineer, security, and member of Zion's male corps. Therefore, we acknowledge that God is God who does all things well. His love is unconditional and his promises are true. He has promised a place of peace and rest to those who love him and seek to do his will. When we reflect on the memories of Brother Carter, we know that he is a recipient of that great promise. To God be the glory. Sister Dolores Matthews, Minister of Music. Amen. Amen. Zion Baptist Church. Resolution. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth to end the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Whereas God in his infinite wisdom and knowledge has removed from our midst our beloved Deacon Anthony David Carter. Whereas Deacon Carter was born in Omaha, Nebraska, grew up in North Omaha along with his brother Alan, matriculated in Omaha Public Schools, and graduated from Northwest High School in 1979. Whereas Deacon Carter joined Zion Baptist Church at a young age under the pastorate of Reverend James S. Allen and as a youth participated in the Miss Master Choir, the Youth Choir, the Voices of Zion, and the Junior Usher. As an adult, he provided leadership to the Fisherman League, assisted with the audiovisual ministry, served as chairman of Men's Day, and sang with the male chorus and served as the church custodian, opening and closing entrances for service and setting up for dinners, meetings, <clears throat> funerals, and other special programs. He was called to serve as a deacon in 2021 under Pastor Kenneth Allen. Whereas Deacon Carter was a devoted and loving father to daughter Samantha and son Alexander and a doting grandfather to Kathleen Therefore, be it resolved that the pastor, the joint board, and the entire congregation of Zion Baptist Church extends to the family of Deacon Anthony David Carter our heartfelt sympathy and deepest love, commending you to the Lord from whence cometh your help, remembering God's promise that he will never leave you comfortless. Be it further resolved that we offer ourselves to comfort those who mourn his passing, and that this resolution will be given to the family in a copy preserved in the official archives of Zion Baptist Church. Done by the Zion Baptist Church and prayerfully submitted, Reverend Kenneth A. Allen, Senior Pastor, Sister Eleanor E. Brown, Secretary, Church Clerk. Amen. Expressions of gratitude. The family would like to thank you for your kind words of encouragement and expressions of love during this difficult time. May God continue to bless each of you. Amen. Amen. 
And let me say, I think that I may have overlooked on behalf of the family, Sister Samantha Carter and Brother Alexander Carter, and I certainly did not want to do that. And so, Brother and Sister Carter, if you would like to come at this time, and then following the two of them, uh, there will be uh, uh, the reading of the obituary, a song, and the eulogy. Amen. Good afternoon. Hi. Um, just kind of want to start by saying thank you to everyone here. Uh, thank you for all the amazing stories that were told. Thank you for reflecting and remembering my father. Um, he was a great man. He yeah. taught me a lot. Um, raised us both very well. And uh, he was truly amazing. Definitely gone too soon. Um, I do want to thank everyone. Um, also, just for supporting us and being there for both of us through this whole entire process. Uh, I'm not going to get into names, there's too many people, but thank you to everyone here in my entire family that's sitting up here. Uh, the Church of Zion, Pastor Allen, thank you guys, the entire AAA team. I appreciate you all, thank you. Um, and I just thank you. It's been a, words can't express the type of pain that is felt, but it makes it a lot easier when people are around and supportive, you know, so um, I really appreciate that. We both do, and uh, he will never be forgotten. Nope. He, uh, he, he will always live on within all of us, but I know I will never, ever, ever forget him. He was too, he was just too amazing of a person. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just thank you all. I appreciate you all. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'll just reiterate, uh, thank you to everyone here, family, friends, co-workers, so forth and so on. Honestly, I hadn't really planned to say anything, but um, it's just a case where throughout this whole time period of from when, I'd even say how it started all last year, when he lost basically two brothers, one through blood and then the other through bond, back to back. And I, I remember getting the call directly when he, when he called me and I knew something was wrong. And for years, I think both my brother and I, we've, we've wanted our dad to kind of, we knew he wouldn't move from Omaha, but he was always like, well, you know, it's too cold here and I understand, I definitely understand, but... Uh, when, when Uncle Alan passed, and it, it was odd when he came here because when Uncle Gerald passed, he, he had his own health issues, but he said, no, that's my brother. I, I'm going either way. And not even two weeks after, he's gone. And when he, when he left, because they were on their way to church right. that day, right. Right. and my dad rushed into the hospital. And he called and told me what happened. You know, we both kind of knew our dad really wasn't going to leave. Not only leave Omaha, but he, uh, a part of him left when they left, yeah. basically. Yeah. And it, uh, so when Alexander told me what happened, and I don't mean this in a bad way, a part of me was definitely shocked, but at the same time I wasn't. Because... And in, in, in an odd way, a flow of acceptance came over me because I knew that no matter how healthy someone can be or how sick someone can be, anybody can succumb to heartbreak. Right, right. And when the doctors ruled out basically anything that it could have been with the heart and all they could say was that it just stopped, we, you know, I, I, I made my peace then. And as a daughter, even though as a child, you want your parent here, but you also too don't want them in pain. And so throughout this whole process, neither one of us wanted to be selfish. But we can admit when, you know, we'd like to have him here, but he missed his brother. Both of them. So um, 
we can both send them off in love and with you know and pray and hope that he finds that solace with them basically so thank you
you now to continue to view the uh, video until its conclusion and also to read silently the obituary as music softly plays uh, and following those two or three minutes then we will come with the eulogy. Amen. 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 I want to begin by thanking all of those who have been a part of the program today, for those who shared in remarks, uh, for those who uh, were present, for those who have sung with the choir, and whatever role uh, you played, we are truly grateful. Amen. 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 We're thankful because you did not have to do it. And just the fact that you are present in this place, amen, the ministry of presence yes. makes a huge difference. Amen? Amen. amen? amen. And the family may not be able to personally acknowledge uh, your presence or say thank you to you on an individual basis, but I'm saying it on their behalf. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very, very much. Amen. And I want to thank our preachers, the preachers who are present, Reverend Nathaniel Norville and Reverend Charles Nelson. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Nelson and Reverend Norville, for being a part of this celebration of life. Amen. 
and all who have come. I'm especially so glad to see Alicia Carter, a man who uh, came all the way from California. And we did not know Alicia would be able to be present. And the fact that she is here means so much. I know uh, to Samantha and to Alexander, but it also means much to us here at Zion Baptist Church because you got your start as a little girl here in Sunday school, singing in the Zionette's choir, and serving the Lord right here at Zion Baptist Church. And we are so thankful uh, to see you, Alicia. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Uh, for representing the other side of the family. Amen. And, and, uh, and, and everything has been uh, just amazing uh, up to this point. Notice I said up to this point. Amen. Uh, because I want to say that I won't hold you long. Uh, and uh, someone years ago said, anytime a Baptist preacher says, I won't hold you long, amen, just be careful, amen. But it is not my intent to hold you long. How about that? It's not my intent to hold you long, but for a few minutes. I want to say without equivocation, without any, uh, without a doubt, that Deacon Anthony Carter was a true servant of the Lord. He was faithful. He loved this church. I think I need to say that again. He loved this church. Amen. Any thing that he could do for Zion Baptist Church, he did it. Amen. Amen. Sometimes he would say, Pastor, do you need anything? Uh, is there anything I can do for you? Uh, quite often when I was uh, 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 conducting interviews or talking with persons or had, had appointments with people, he would stay until the last person left the building. Uh, and sometimes I would be late into the night, and he would just sit out in the outer office quietly, not interrupting, not, not trying to listen uh, to our conversation, but just letting me know that he was there for me. He was truly a deacon's deacon, a man of God. But he was also a friend. He was, he was a dear friend. You've heard about the jokes that he told. And I'm part of that group that grew up with him. We grew up singing in the choir, ushering on the usher board, playing softball together, and then coming back uh, for our second choir rehearsal. And then sometimes we would go out in the evening, on Saturday evening, and we would, we would go for pizza and go bowling. And that was just the kind of friendship that we had as members of the youth department at Zion Baptist Church. Oh, and we had so much fun. Uh, and uh, it's amazing how uh, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money uh, or, or do a lot to have fun if you're around the right people. Uh, that can make all the difference. And when my siblings, uh, my sister and uh, my brothers found out that uh, Deacon Carter had passed away. Uh, they were devastated. Uh, I just saw them this past weekend uh, in New York City for the wedding of my younger son, and they were heartbroken. Uh, my brother James Jr. was the same age as Deacon Carter, and they stayed in touch, and they were bosom buddies. And he called this morning just to say that Deacon Carter had been a consummate friend for over 50 years. He said, Anthony was the one who kept in touch with me. He's the one who was the glue in our relationship. And he said simply, I was hurt to hear about his passing. And that's all the way from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Amen. 
uh, when, when we first heard, you know, that I shall never forget, it was Sunday morning. We were here, and it was a, what we thought was a typical Sunday morning. And Deacon Carter would be the first person here. He would open up the church, and that would start the day. He would come into my office. He would turn on the television so I could watch the proceedings of Sunday school uh, in my office, and he would turn on the fireplace if it was a cool or a crisp, cool, crisp uh, Sunday morning, and yet none of that had been done on this particular Sunday. And we were concerned because that was unlike him. So faithful was he, so consistent was he. And so we began to make inquiries. We called everybody we knew. We, we called some people, and we thought we had some phone numbers that it turned out we didn't have. And, and we, were, we, were, we were just inconsolable. Uh, and, and finally we said, well, let's have the police do a wellness check. We know, we know he's probably there, and he overslept or something happened, but let's have them do a wellness check. And they entered the apartment, and he wasn't there. We went on with service, but we didn't know what was happening. And finally, I received a note that he had been in a car crash and that he was on life support. And I immediately announced it to the congregation. And we had prayer for him before we finished the service. And even with all of that, we thought, he'll be okay. He'll be fine. This is Anthony Carter, resilient, strong, amen, bounced back. But it was not to be. And as I said at the beginning of the service today, we were reminded once again that we did not come here to stay. I said we didn't come here to stay. And that God is sovereign, which means that God can do what he wants to do, when he wants to do it. Just about the time we think we've got God figured out. We've got his schedule figured out. We've got his itinerary right in front of us. We know what he's going to do next. We know what's going to be his next move. God does something that causes us to scratch our heads and wonder why. And we are reminded that his ways are not our ways. That his thoughts are not our thoughts. They're as far above ours as the heavens are above the earth. And all we can do is say yes. Amen to the will of God. And just for a few moments, I want to pull a scripture from 1 Samuel chapter 20 about David. And David, of course, was, was destined to be king of Israel. And he had a problem, though, because Saul, the current king of Israel, had become jealous of David. And in the 20th chapter, first verse, you'll find these words, and I'll just pick and choose a few of them from that chapter. Then David went to Jonathan and asked, what have I done? What is my crime? How have I wronged your father that he is trying to kill me? Never, Jonathan replied, you are not going to die. Look, my father doesn't do anything great or small without letting me know. Why would he hide this from me? It isn't so. Verse 5, it says, so David said, look, tomorrow is the new moon feast. 
And I'm supposed to dine with the king, with Saul. But let me go and hide in the field until the evening of the day after tomorrow. Verse 18, then Jonathan said to David, tomorrow again is the new moon feast. You will be missed because your seat will be empty. If I were to tag this text with a title, it would be the empty seat. The empty seat. David was a man after God's own heart. David was a man who was not perfect. Yet he was loved by God. He made some mistakes. In fact, he made some huge mistakes. But David had the strength to ask God for forgiveness. And so he goes down in Old Testament history as the man who was after God's own heart, not because he did everything the right way all of the right time. He was a great leader. He was a great king. There's no doubt about it, but he made mistakes. Mm -hmm. But I think there are three principal characteristics of David that caused him to be known as a man after God's own heart. First of all, I think David was, was a helper. I know you thought that it was going to be something profound and deep, and, but, but and he was a helper. He was just, he was somebody who was just willing to help. Mm-hmm. When David was a, a, a young boy, Saul, or rather Samuel, the prophet, had anointed him king. He had laid hands on him and he had said, you are destined to be king of Israel. Not any of your older brothers who are taller, who maybe even were handsomer. But you, David, the youngest of the eight brothers, you will be king of Israel one day. And he anointed him with oil and then he went on his way. Samuel went on his way. And David went back to the sheep, herding sheep. And one day they got a call from the king's office and, uh, uh, and they said, the king needs somebody who will play his harp because he gets migraine headaches and the headaches are so terrible that it almost drives him insane. And if we can get someone who will play the harp for him during those times, we believe it will settle him. And they called on David. David went to the king's palace, played, and indeed the king settled down. And then the king sent a note to Jesse, David's father, and said, we'd like to keep him here in the king's court. Little did Saul know that the person who was going to succeed him was living under his very nose. But you know that's how God works. You do know that, right? You, you, you do know that God can put the person who is going to be ruler over all underneath the person who will try to undermine them because God is that kind of God. And David would play when the king had a difficult time and everything was going well. And one day, David overheard this giant making some noise. David said, who is that? And they said, that's the great Goliath. That's, that's, that's Goliath. And, uh, and he, he is willing to fight any member of our company. 
And David said, this uncircumcised Philistine cannot overcome the great Jehovah God. You, you know the rest of the story. He defeated Goliath. And suddenly, David was a star military leader overnight. And Saul became jealous of him. But don't forget that David started out as just a helper. Someone who was willing to play a role, play his heart. And allow God to do the rest. And so he was a man after God's own heart because he was helper. But he was also a man after God's own heart because he was authentic. All right. And I want to suggest to you today that uh, Brother Carter was authentic. He was, his, he was his own self. He was his real self at all times. Take it or leave it. Like it or not. Amen. He was just who he was, the way he was. Because you remember when, 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 when David heard Goliath and decided that he was going to take on Goliath in, in warfare in the Valley of Elah, um, they brought David armor. And they said, okay, if, if you're going to go, if you're going to fight him, you're going to need this armor. So here, here's armor. And David tried it on, tried it on and said, that's not me. That's not me. They, uh, maybe other folk can wear it, but I, 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 I can't really, I can't really uh, uh, carry this off. This, if, if I put this stuff on, I will look ridiculous to myself. And so he didn't wear it. He remained his authentic self, true to who he was. And you know, you can be a servant, you can be a worker, and still remain true to who you are. Oh, yes, you can. David, David was that, that kind of person. He was his authentic self, and he defeated Goliath. And then, finally... Thirdly, David was loyal. He was loyal. He was, he was loyal. He, he, when the king turned on him, David didn't turn on the king. Because, because you see, in a, in a later chapter, in a later chapter of, of this uh, situation, David had the opportunity to kill King Saul. He could have killed him. Uh, and in, in chapter 24, uh, King Saul was praying. And, and David could have gotten him while he was down in a vulnerable position. He could have killed him. And he cut off just a piece of his cloth. To serve as evidence of the fact that he could have killed King Saul. But in spite of the fact that Saul wanted to kill him, David remained true. In other words, David respected the office. He may have respected the person as well, but he respected the office. He said, I can't kill this man who is king because one day I will be king. And when I am king someday, I'll have someone looking at me with green eyes of, of jealousy. And, 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 and I have to be able to turn my back on those who are working alongside me. And you know, it's still true uh, that, that, uh, that you get what you deserve, uh, uh, and, and if you sow seeds of meanness and unkindness, you will reap a harvest of meanness and unkindness. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? 
Amen. You reap what you sow. And so be careful about the, the seed that you sow. David always remained loyal to the king. And I simply, I simply want to remind us that although Deacon Anthony Carter was not king of Israel or even king of Omaha, <laughs> that he shared these common characteristics. He was a pastor's helper. He truly ministered to people. He was an authentic person. He was true to himself. He was such an authentic person that he would not allow the two lights on one side of the classroom on the other side of this curtain. He would not allow, when he, when he left the church in the evenings, he would not allow one light switch to be up and the other light switch to be down. And we would tell him, but, but, but the lights are out, Deacon Carter. He said, that's all right. I've got to go to the other side and turn one of those lights out so I can come back to this side and turn them both off so that they're in the same position. And we would stand there and wait for him to say, okay. He would do it in the basement. The lights in the basement, the lights up here. And then if we tried to turn them off, I said, he would say, now stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is my job. You assigned me to do this. And I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it well, and I'm going to do it right. Mm -hmm. And he meant it. Thank God for that authenticity there. And then thank God for the loyalty. His seat will be missed. But the one good thing, and I close by saying this, the, the, the one good thing, we are so often in the habit when we talk about a deceased person, we say, we say, uh, we lost brother so-and-so today. We, we lost sister so-and-so today. But the members of Zion have become accustomed to me saying this. We haven't lost anybody. No. To be lost means that something cannot be found. <laughs> and Deacon Anthony Carter is not lost. We know exactly where he is. Amen. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? We know exactly where he is. Amen. He is, he is with the Lord. I said he's with the Lord. And if you don't believe it, 1 Corinthians, or rather 2 Corinthians chapter 5 tells us that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. And we know, therefore, that he is present with the Lord. If I keep going, I'm going to start shouting. Amen. Amen. If I, if I keep going, I'm going to start jumping and clapping my hands. And if I keep going, amen, I'm going to say hallelujah and praise the Lord. If I keep on going, I'm going to shout right here. Because we know where Deacon Anthony Carter is. He ain't lost. And as my sixth grade teacher, Mrs. Essie May Young, used to say, ain't is the word I'm supposed to use. He ain't lost. He's with Alan. Oh, yes, he is. And he's with Brother Mathar. Amen. And one of these old days, if we live right, if we walk with God, we will join them. Amen. And we will cast our crowns before the throne in glory. 
and praise God through the ceaseless ages. Oh, yes, we will. So we thank God that he may have an empty seat here with all of the responsibilities that he held down. I don't know who's going to fulfill all of them. But he has a seat in heaven. And for that, we are grateful. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for Brother Anthony Carter. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for our brother. Oh God, thank you for this father who sacrificed, who returned to Omaha a few years ago with just a few pennies in his pocket and a couple of suitcases on board while riding a train from North Carolina back to Nebraska. Thank you, Lord, that he took care of his family and his responsibilities and pulled himself up by his bootstraps. Thank you, God, that you blessed him and you watched over him. And he made it. Now, Lord, once again, we ask that you would bless these beautiful children. Bless this lovely granddaughter. Oh, God, keep them in your care as only you can. Now, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his love, his joy, and his peace. Let us all say, Amen. We will now turn you over into the hands of the funeral directors.